Welcome to MI Live, your daily nutrition talk show. I am Jay. With me is Brad Dieter. And Brad, how are you? You're very dark today in your in your room. My uh, my ambiance is reflective of my mood today. <laughs> ooh, ooh, man! Using you, using big words, and you're you're so you're you're dark today. You're gray because you're not blue. Uh, what, what was that? Are you a tiger? Gray. I don't. Rawr. Oh my god! Oh my <laughs> god! Oh, that was the weirdest thing that I think has happened on the show. <laughs> uh, well, I am wearing a gray sweatshirt, so I'm and a gray hat. And a gray hat. I've, we have matching hats on. Pretty much. Yours yeah. says Rogue. Mine just has a logo on it, so we're good. What logo is that? It's for the car company. Oh. So, <clears throat> Brad. What up, <clears throat> homie? Pardon me. Today, so yeah, the, on, on the last show, we talked about all things protein. Just went over a quick kind of a rundown of the bit, uh, kind of a rundown of what protein is, what it does. You had some awesome slides. Do you have awesome slides today for carbohydrates? I have the problem with carbohydrates is it's so all over the place that I have, I have like slides and figures and stuff for a bunch of different things related to it. Okay. That well, let's sense. see if we can. Last show, last show, we were, we did not prepare for. I mean, we prepared, but we did not talk about what we were going to talk about because we just had a conversation about protein, and it worked out well. Everything we had, you had a, you had a slide for it. So let's hope, hopefully, we can keep that, keep that moving into here. Yep, let's do it. <clears throat> so, if anybody has questions while we're going over this, feel free to ask. Let me put our little banner up here on our, on the uh, video, so that. People will sign up for coaching. <clears throat> um, Brad. Yes. Oh, hold on. I'm missing a banner. I got to put the one that tells people what we're talking about. Oh, all things God. carbs. Whew, that was close. All right. <clears throat> so carbs. <clears throat> carbs are not essential to human diet. Is that in, true or false? In it's, theory. It's technically true. Okay. I said in theory and Siri picked up on that <laughs> <laughs> so in technically we don't need carbs now um all carbohydrates are you you eat carbs and we have carbs from various sources you can you get carbs from animal products in theory you can is it anything worth even mentioning or is it just easier and generally acceptable to just say you don't get carbs from animal products yes okay from from meat obviously things like milk can have carbohydrates yes so when we say animal product we're talking about meat eggs yeah like so that. i mean well eggs don't have any carbohydrates right. well right. mostly ne they don't um negligible yeah i mean in in there's like carbohydrate like molecules but um animal meats do have very small amounts of glycogen in them now, how much of that gets absorbed, blah, 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 is a different story. But um, there's like imperceptible amounts. And that glycogen that you're getting from meat is just stored carbohydrate, carbohydrate that's stored in the muscle. Yeah. Right? Okay. So they're not producing carbs or anything like that. All carbs do car <clears throat> all carbohydrates originate from plants, correct? Like you can't get, like there's no animal that produces carbohydrates naturally. They have to get them from somewhere and then you know even a cow it eats plants well and then it comes out in dairy we, we do have gluconeogenesis so you okay, can make carbohydrates out of other things but that's they just true. yeah there's right. not a ton of them you're right i didn't even think about that you are correct so <clears throat> but for what we're talking about all of our carb sources anything that's significant comes from either Planty plants plant or dairy or dairy dairy okay but or um manufactured sugar okay yeah agreed <clears throat> um so do <clears throat> and no matter it, with the exception of uh fiber if i if i take in if i take in carbs so if i take in if i eat a jelly donut or if i eat a bagel um or if i eat broccoli um outside of the fiber the carbohydrates from that are going to be broken down in my body as glucose, right? It, it's all going to be glucose and we can't tell where glucose, my body can't tell if glucose 
if this glu- uh, broken down carbohydrate turned into glucose, my body does not know if it came from a jelly donut or and does not know if it came from uh, oatmeal. Yes. Okay. So all carbohydrates, are they all created equal then? Um, in one sense, yes. In another sense, yo. Yo. No. Yo. <laughs> oh my God. Today's going to be a long day. Um, Yobohydrates? Yobohydrates. Uh, so like the glucose molecule that's found in your bagel and that's found in your oatmeal and that's found in your vegetable, they all are the same glucose molecule, right? So the gram of glucose in there and the gram of glucose that ends up in your blood, it doesn't matter where it comes from. Now, the overall aspects of the food are very different. Like the the rate at which the glucose appears in your body, um, the micronutrients associated with it, the um, satiety with it, those things do matter. But the actual like carbohydrates themselves, there's no difference. Okay. Okay. No differentiate. <clears throat> and then what about, because we also have fiber. So this yes. is a, a, a carbohydrate and it is completely different than anything that's going to be glucose or fructose, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. So what is that? Like what, um, what, well, not, I guess, I guess what is that is a very broad, <laughs> an, unless you have a very short answer for an easy answer for that one. I yeah. don't want to trap you into a corner like that. No, that's, that's a fair question. So here's the way to think about it. Carbohydrates come in either like single molecules like glucose. Mm -hmm. They come in um, like two molecules together, disaccharides, which is like sucrose sucrose or is it lactose? Is Mm -hmm. galactose and glucose Um, Mm -hmm. or lactose? And then you have like starch, which is a lot of glucose put together. Um, And then you have things like fiber, which are very similar to starch. But the difference is the bonds that are made between the sugar molecules, right? So the reason that humans can digest starch is we have an enzyme called amylase that breaks down the bonds. Like imagine these are two glucose molecules. See my hands? And they're bound together with this bond. Okay. Brandon, two thumbs touching. Amylase breaks that bond. Right. So you can break those down and then you can absorb the glucose. Right. Okay. Cellulose, which is very similar um, to starch, the way that the bond is right here requires an enzyme called cellulase to break Mm -hmm. that down. And humans do not produce cellulase. So we can't break it down. So the whole fiber molecule stays um, intact through your GI tract. So you can't break it down and you can't absorb it. Okay. So, question on that. With starch, yes. <clears throat> with starch, because I always, I remember it had to be like 2000 because I was, I was in high school, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was in high school. Waxy maize starch came out to be the biggest oh, thing yeah. in bodybuilding. Waxy maize, and it tasted, I don't, I haven't tried, I don't even know if they still, if it's still, it tastes like popular. boogers. It tasted like, it yeah it was it was the, like it was waxy and, and yeah it tasted like and... it tasted like ch- slimy chalk yeah and it, was, it was horrible and the powder was so oh, it was horrible <laughs> um <clears throat> but you drank it because that's what uh was in you know in flex magazine or whatever was popular <laughs> then do you <clears throat> speaking of that before we go on do you remember the big like it was like 50 pound tubs of vitargo yeah yeah that was crazy okay yeah, i think i used to buy them i used to buy them oh my god that's I awesome. got to go to the supplement store today to go buy protein powder. So we'll see. Maybe I'll maybe I'll see what the create. Can I just use the company credit card and just buy the craziest things to product test? No. Yes. No. Let's let everybody vote. If I can use the Macros Inc. company credit card to just buy the craziest things in the world, uh, say yes. If not, don't vote. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> there is a uh, truck parked outside my window and it's reflecting and it is, I don't know if you can see that. that super bright. Yeah, it is killing me. Um, so getting back to our, our, our topic, you know, this waxy maize starch, <clears throat> oh, it's, you need it for recovery. It's the only thing for recovery is obviously we have different bonds. Starches is a lot of glucose 
chain together. Does my body handle the glucose breaking down starch? Is it the overall end result? Is it different than me just eat it than me eating, getting glucose from a jelly donut or starch? Is there a difference in anything? <clears throat> there is. Okay. Um, there isn't in terms of calories, right? The calories are the same. Um, so, so hold on, let's, let's hit that. Can we hit that point first? Yeah. So if starch is, oh, I guess it would be because it's still gram, gram per gram. You just have yeah. less quote pieces of, of, of starch yeah. versus piece. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. Um, so uh, the difference is you have to break down the large starch molecules, right? Which that starts primarily in your mouth. So you actually digest, um, you start digesting carbohydrates in your mouth, um, like enzymatically. You have amylase, which is produced. Um, fun fact, people have varying numbers of copies of the amylase gene. So some people produce a lot more amylase than others. So the ability to break down and digest certain types of carbohydrates is different. Random fact. Um, but yeah, so you, you end up breaking down starch in your mouth, in your stomach, um, and then into your digestive tract, but it, it chemically it starts in your mouth. Um, opposite of protein, which you really have no enzymatic degradation of protein in your mouth. It's just mechanical. The enzymatic degradation uh, using proteases occurs in your GI tract. Um, but yeah, so basically the difference between like, let's say you were to just drink a bunch of just like straight glucose or dextrose or whatever. Um, versus like eating a piece of bread. The things that will differ are the rate of appearance of glucose in your body um, and your insulin response to it, just due to the rate and type of, uh, not, not necessarily type, but the rate, the rate and amount of glucose that hits your body at a given time. Okay. So it's going to be utilized though by my body the same way. Yes. Okay. Is there a lot of evidence that says that I should be taking, is there any evidence that says that post-workout or for, in, is there anybody that would, let me rephrase that. Is there anybody that would benefit from using waxy maize starch or starch versus regular glucose for training purposes? Um, Any significant with any significant I would say yeah. yes under a couple circumstances. One, if you have like multi um, event days, because um, it generally loads a little bit quicker into your body, right? So if it's like if you're doing like a CrossFit competition and you've got like 10 events or something, um, that's a benefit. And in some people, it's easier on their GI tract than other things. Um, so that can be another reason. But other than that, not really. Okay, so it's probably not worth the extra $80 to load up on carbs and kill my no. calories? Yeah, that's a negative ghostwriter. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> the second thing you had said earlier was, and if anybody can see the video and see me writing, I'm writing down notes to make sure we talk about things because we don't rehearse. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a much better conversation. It's kind um, of like whose line is it anyway? Where the show's unscripted and the points don't matter. Yeah, no, the points <laughs> the the points definitely matter, Brad. That's uh, all life is about is points. Speaking of points, you should. St oh, I I told you, uh, my quarter collection is ranked in the world now. I'm so proud of you, Jay. I know, and you should see the one I just bought this morning. Oh Somebody typed in Washington wrong. Oh, I, today is payday. We can buy things. Yeah, and I scooped up the what I scooped up a very rare Washington quarter for half price because somebody typed Washington wrong on eBay. Um, so yeah, boy. So fiber. Um, <clears throat> circling back to what you said about fiber. What? So we don't digest fiber, correct? We, well, we have insoluble and soluble. Yeah. Or is that is that not going to play a difference? Because that's I, that's one of the things that I see come up all the time. Is what's yeah. the difference? fiber types um so there are there is a little bit of difference um so soluble fiber dissolves in water um okay. insoluble fiber does That's not <laughs> the way that you digest them is a little bit different um mm -hmm. generally what happens is you your microbiome will chew on the fiber as it goes through um Okay, and, so my, my gut bacteria, right? Yeah, your okay. gut bacteria. Now, 
soluble versus insoluble will kind of change the mechanics of how fast it goes through the effect that has in your mm -hmm. GI tract, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So, so, I, so I think people get a little, I mean, unless you have like specific needs for either type, like I wouldn't worry about exactly if you're getting soluble or insoluble. Both, um, both are going to give you benefits. Yeah. Okay. So with, 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 then we'll just, we'll just, unless there's a specific, uh, you see a specific need, we'll just talk fiber. We won't differentiate for this conversation. Perfect. She is. Um, so if I can't digest it, yeah, is there, does it have actual, obviously <laughs> calories in terms of raising the temperature of water? It will. Does it have, does it have a caloric effect on a human though, since I can't digest it? No, not really. So it's, I mean, is, is it essentially a calorie free food fiber? Yes. Okay. There are some like very minor nuances to that answer, but for all intents and purposes, yes. So why do we track fiber in our food? Because you need to get fiber or you die. Instead well, I, sorry. Why do we track more. fiber in our calories when we're tracking macros? Like why, why can't I just say, well, I'm going to diet down on 900 calories, but I'm going to have, a, I'm going to have fiber is going to make me more full. I'm going to have more fiber and then it's a free calorie. I mean, you can, it's just, it, you, you then just get into the minutia, right? Like let's say the average person really needs, um, if, I mean, if you're eating 900 calories a day, you probably really only need like 12 to 15 grams of fiber. So that's like right. 50 to 60 calories. So it's like, eh, whatever. Like I'm not, I'm not going to yeah. split hairs over that. Um, now you, now you can, right. You, you can subtract out the net carbs or whatever, but mm -hmm. I think people get a little bit too, too much. Yep. They get too worried about that. And that's not really what makes or breaks the progress. Right. hundred, hundred, hundred percent agree. I know when I did my bodybuilding show, that was, <clears throat> you know, I, I think I was 1400 calories a day for the pat for the last yeah. four weeks, I think is what I was on. And I got to the point where I was so hungry. I mean, I couldn't stand almost anymore. I was so tired. And, uh, one of the things I did was just, I, I, I had already worked, my, most of my diet was high. I was really high fiber. I think I was on 90 to 110 grams of fiber a day, uh, which is a lot, but it's something that, you know, if, if we have too little fiber, we have GI issues. If you have too much fiber, you have GI issues. Yeah. Um, but it is one of those things that I personally, I'm not, maybe you could shed light. I was able to, I, if I would have jumped up to a hundred grams of fiber right away, I probably oh would have. I would have had issues, but I slowly over, over four months worked my diet more higher, higher, higher fiber and was able to eat a hundred grams of fiber a day without issue. <laughs> that um, is a lot. Yeah, it was, I, I was eating, would not recommend that. For me. I was eating so much broccoli in a day to I, again, I was in a bodybuilding show trying to, you know, did you have like horrible GI distension? No, I didn't have any. Um, crazy. yeah, well, like I said, I, I probably did that over three months. I went from about 20 grams of fiber a day. Uh, which was uh, really low to ramping up where I just ate vegetables all day. And um, when I cut out about a week, about three days before the show, I cut out most fiber um, and I just kind of flattened out real nice. I, my stomach, I had distension the whole time, but it came down. It was nice. Um, so it is a tool I think people can use, you know, a little bit of a hunger management. Fiber fills you up. For show. Sure. Um, so does our, what does our body use fiber for exactly? Uh, it's mostly microbiome and then like GI <clears throat> movement. Right. So is there, a, is there a nutritional value to fiber? Um, like not, micro, micronutrients. Oh, uh, well, fiber itself doesn't contain any micronutrients. Okay. But foods that are high in fiber tend Dude. to be high in micronutrients. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> is there any down? So we kind of talked about it. What are the downsides? To are there sides to fiber in general, and what are the downsides to too much fiber? Um, if you don't get enough fiber, you have some <coughs> some risks of in elevated cardiovascular risk markers. Okay. Um, if you get too much, you can have GI problems. Okay. So, are there <clears throat> is there any is fiber used at all in anything as far as muscle repair, glycogen restore, anything like that, that we'd be concerned with for not that physical fitness. Of. Okay. So <clears throat> we will, 
let's let's get to our questions and then come back to this. How's that sound? Come and move on to the to another part. Yeah, I have all sorts of slides ready to go. Oh, if you want to show a slide, go ahead. No, I mean okay. whenever we get to certain topics. I'm just okay. I'm I'm armed and ready. Maybe I'm not gonna hit them today. Maybe not. Oh man. Is it true? Amber Shaw said, is it true that for each gram of carbohydrate your body hangs on to three grams of water? I believe that's true. That is true. Yep. I think it's approximately three grams, but yeah, it is true. Um, Woody said, Hey guys, hello. Hi. You're in the right. She's in the right account today. Her name's forwards. It's not her work account. I want to know what nationality um, or background Zipora is. No, it's T Zipora to Zipora. You have to say the T. Zip, zip, yeah. Like zip. <laughs> Joan said, is it common for a person just starting macro counting to be nervous about eating carbs and gaining weight because they are accustomed to very to a very low carbohydrate diet? Um, yes. yes. And I want to show you some data on this so you can see exactly what you should expect um, and why you're probably going to see the scale go up, but you shouldn't worry about it. So sure. Sure. this is this is a this is a paper that was published. Um and I'm going to show you the context of it. This was a ketogenic diet study that was done. Um, and it's been drastically misused for certain things. <laughs> this is the best. This is from SciHub. But this lady's just always waving in the bottom corner. It's so funny. Really? Um, so and I'll show you two different interpretations of this data. So this was a study. Um, let's just take out all of the problems with it and the fact that it doesn't actually tell you what it it's reported to tell you, but the data does tell you one very specific thing. Um, and this is the water manipulation and body weight composition or the body composition changes that occur due to shifts in water. Um, and when I say body composition, just how a DEXA reads. So this was a study where they took people and they put them on a ketogenic diet for, uh, for 10 weeks. And then they switched them back to like a full carbohydrate diet. So from, uh, from week one to week 10, the people on a ketogenic diet lost about 10 pounds, right? Which over 10 weeks, a pound a week, that's pretty normal for dieting. But then in the one week that they went from um, going from ketogenic to full carb, we'll just say, they essentially gained almost five pounds in a week. Now, it's physically impossible to gain five pounds of body fat unless you're consuming... What would that, what would that be? That would be a uh, 15, seventeen and a half thousand calorie yeah. surplus, which is every day. Let's just say your a low TDE is two thousand. That's every day at like three thousand calories, or two twenty five hundred. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you'd be you'd have over to be 2500. over twenty five hundred calories yeah. a day, and that's I mean that's absurd, right? You just but that's like having two Thanksgiving dinners a day for seven days. Um, so I basically mean, what happens that's is, just two. That's two Big Macs a day. I could do that. Yeah, right. So basically what you see is in the span of a week, you just get massive shifts of water in your body. So you're going from very glycogen depleted to very glycogen repleted. So you get shifts in body water where you're actually holding on to a lot more water inside your muscle tissue and you're filling up your gas tank in your muscle tissue. So you will see a couple pounds on the scale go up as you start to add more carbohydrates, but it's not body fat. Um, and here's kind of another way to look at it. So if you look at um, body weight, right? So here's in the span of a week, these people gained, it looks like about five kilograms, right? Which is 10, 12 pounds, but that's just from going like severely glycogen depleted to very full glycogen stores. It'd be like, go out, run for four or five hours in a hundred degree heat, lose, I don't know, a gallon of water from to sweat, weigh yourself and then drink a gallon of water, right? Like that's essentially what's happening to these people. So I'd say prepare for that. Okay. Yeah. That, that, <clears throat> pardon me. The, the other thing you're going to see that happens when you switch over is you'll look much more jacked. Well, yeah, you'll look you'll look way jacked. You also see the scale go up because of the added sodium um, that you'll be getting in. So you might also want to watch out for that. And you'll you'll probably feel uh, with with going back to our fiber topic, you'll probably feel a little bloated for a couple of days too. Yep. So, but it's all water. It's not body fat. You'll be fine. 
And this is why we look at weights in weekly averages. Yeah, and we also understand what happens when you like shift body water. Yep. Shift body water, you said, right? Shift. Okay, making sure there was an F in there. S-H-I-F-double-T. <laughs> All right. Karina said, can you possibly be on a plant-based diet and be low carb? I keep hearing that low carb diets help sh uh, shred fat, but it seems almost impossible to that on a plant-based diet. Um, you can be on a plant-based diet and be low carb. It's a it, lot of uh, fiber. Um, and difficult. And very difficult. You can do it. Um. But uh, but there's kind of the, you know, in there it says being on a low-carb diet helps shred fat. I mean, that's generally just because it's low-carbohydrate or low-calorie and not due to just being low-carbohydrate. So if you actually look into um, the scientific literature on that, there isn't a major difference between whether you go low-fat or low-carb for weight loss. If anything, the data suggests that low-fat is a little bit more beneficial for weight loss than low-carb. Um, I think the reason we get a lot of traction in the low carb piece is if you cut out um, carbohydrates from your diet, you're going to be holding a lot less water um, and you're going to be holding less carbohydrates. So you kind of have an artificially deflated body weight. So, okay. But if you what actually measure fat mass changes, um, low fat is a little bit better than ketogenic dieting or low carb dieting. That makes sense. What... I mean, a, a low carb plant based diet is just going to be a lot of like a lot of nuts, isn't it? I mean, that's nuts and beans, and yeah, that's. I mean, even beans have carbs. I mean, that's good. Yeah, that that'd be difficult. Yeah, it would be. <clears throat> uh, Marta, or lots of tofu. Oh, that doesn't sound good either. <clears throat> Marta said, "I started counting macros in July, and even if I'm under my calories and macro goals for the day, when I eat carbs at night, skinny popcorn or Kodiak cakes, the scale doesn't move the next morning. Is it related to eating carbs before going to bed? For example, last night I ended 100 calories under my goal, but I had skinny popcorn before going to bed, and the morning my weight was the exact same as it was yesterday. Yeah, Most I mean, that, yeah, that's just from having calories at night and then also having carbohydrates at night. You just your glycogen stores are more full in the morning than they would be if you didn't have carbs at night. Right. So it's just kind of like, um, imagine if you checked your, let's say it was, let's say you, you got paid at night and you checked your bank account first thing in the morning and bills hadn't come out yet. Or if you get paid in the morning, it's like, it just depends on when you're depositing that check. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a temporary holding of, the carbohydrates until your body spends in that day. Ian, Ian remembers um, uh, Vitagro. It's like Vitagra. drinking Vitagro, 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 Vitargo. Vitargo. I don't know. I never, I think that by the time I ever heard it, by the time I ever talked to another human being about supplements, I was not taking it or interested in it. Have you ever done that? Like heard like words that you've read online, but have never heard like, like GIF and like GIF or GIF. I think that's interesting that we have words that have been developed that people don't hear spoken ever. Um, I don't even care that it's actually GIF. It's still GIF. I, I know it's GIF, but I will pronounce it GIF. I, I don't know that one. I don't understand. Like it stands, the G stands for graphic. I know. I, I don't. I don't get why you would. Why would you just call the GIF? <sighs> because the guy who created it wanted to be funny. Because he's wrong. I know. <laughs> uh, oh, see, people are saying yes. I can use the company credit card to buy whatever I want. Only if I try the food items live, so we can see. That's fine. If that's the case, I get the same privilege, and there will be no money in the bank account tomorrow. I mean, <clears throat> that's that's your call. You're you're the CFO, so. Oh God, that's terrifying. <laughs> Ian said, read carbs, fiber, and nutrition labels. There can be some confusion around uh, phrases such as net carbs and how dietary fiber can play a part in total calories stated on the label. For simplicity's sake, what is your guys' go-to approach for tracking carbs? And we kind of talked about this earlier, and it's just track everything. Yeah, I tell people it's like Pokemon. You got to track them all. <laughs> that was good. Next question. <laughs> Jay's so upset by my Pokemon joke. 
but I don't think you understand how much Pokemon talk goes on in my house. You know be- what? Between Liam and Lisa, because they're Any, both obsessed with it. Anything after the original Pokemon Red and Blue, does, it's not real. Oh, yeah, that's that's what we, we, we talk about and they play, and it's Pokemon <clears throat> in my house oh, it was nonstop. I used to be yeah. able to cite all 151 Pokemon. Oh, they've from, had that competition. From start to finish. I can't do it anymore, but... yeah. I got I got challenged to name all the states last night. Did you I can name do all it. the presidents last night? <laughs> I don't know your fancy song, but I did the states, and then Lisa looked at me and said, "Well, I don't know if that's right. He doesn't count." <laughs> but she's she's not wrong. <laughs> I was like, "All right, um, Brad, our hat game is strong today." Yeah, my hat game is better because I I've had this hat for a long time. You're so rogue. I know, I know. I didn't even know what rogue was when I bought this hat. Like, did you think it was about Star Wars Rogue One? I had no idea. I bought me and Lisa matching hats, and, <laughs> and they said Rogue. How did you not know who Rogue was in, like, 2017 or 18, whenever you met Lisa? I don't know what year that was. Um, I just didn't. I, I, was, I just bought a hat that said Rogue. I was at the CrossFit Games, too, and I just bought a hat that said Rogue. I bought two hats that said Rogue. I had no idea. And I think I actually had Rogue equipment in my basement. I just didn't. It didn't click. Oh my god. Yeah. Next. Yeah. <laughs> Ian said, get your fiber so you don't diver. Brad yeah, Peter. I said eat fiber, otherwise you die. So oh. Ian was just making a rhyme out of it. Oh, I expect you to wrap that, Brad. Uh, how much fiber is in a day is good? What is the recommendation? 14 <laughs> grams per yeah, thousand calories? 12 to 15 grams per thousand calories. That's why women and men have different fiber recommendations. It's based on daily calorie intake and the fact that on average, men weigh more than women, so they have higher calorie needs. But yeah, it's about 12 to 15 grams per thousand calories. Okay. Uh, Marta forgot to mention that she's eating a deficit of 1,600, so she consumed 1,500 calories. Yeah, I would still say that that's just the carbs at night. And uh, and I believe- and that's not bad, right? That's just... No. I mean, if, if you're going to eat carbohydrates at night and you want to use your morning weight as like your lowest weight, um, I would either weigh like during your longest period of fasting during the day or just realize like, hey, my probably one of my highest body weights is going to be right when I wake up because I eat right before I go to bed. Um, either way works. But the other thing to keep taking, if you eat a hundred grams of carbs every single night before bed, it's going to even out. Yeah. It's going to level out after like a week or two. So if it's once in a ra- if it's like every fourth night or something or every random time you do it, don't worry about it. Um, but if it's every night, it's going to even out. So it won't be a big deal. Um, person from the Facebook group said, speaking of stored carbs, there is evidence that shows reduction in myofib, uh, fibr- uh, thank you. I can't say fibrillar is a very difficult word. Myofibrillar glycogen. Oh, it always drove me nuts when people would say, uh, atrial fibrillation, <laughs> fibrillation, myofibrillar, uh, glycogen levels cause muscular fatigue through impairments in the way your muscle fibers uh, exert force, i.e. the excitation contraction coupling process, even when ATP levels are high. So don't worry about the increase in water along with carbs. Carbs are your friend for power output. So should we break that down? So stored carbs yeah. is the carbohydrates you store inside cells in your body. Um, the myofibrillar glycogen levels means, so your muscle fibers are like, think about a cable. Right, you know how the cables have like all the little um, cables inside them. Basically, it's like a, a cable section. Right, is your muscle? F- your muscles are like these big bundles, and in the bundles, there's smaller mm-hmm. bundles. And at the smallest bundle unit, there are mm-hmm. muscle fibers, mm-hmm. and those muscle fibers are called myofibrils. Now, in those myofibrils, you store glycogen. And so, what he's saying is the the ability of your muscles to contract is impaired when you have reduced glycogen levels in your muscles. You know what also is really cool? The you. best the best analogy for how muscles contract is just think of people playing tug of war. Yeah. Yeah. They just pull 
and then they release. No, oh. that's it. Carry on, my wayward son. Okay. Oh, Witty came back with some. This is actually backwards. Sapora is her first name, and Witty's her last name, but she tends to get called that. Uh, Sapora is Hebrew. The I TZ is it. pronounced like pretzel. In I was gonna say it sounded like Hebrew yeah. or Jewish, but it, I didn't want to. Yeah, make assumptions <clears throat> that were not accurate. Yeah, I actually think that I have a cousin with this with that name. On my, that would be. That would I, be I'm pretty sure I do. J. Yeah, uh, but hold on. Or, uh, pronounced like pretzel. The translation is bird, but its biblical origin, Moses' wife name is uh, Zipporah. Yeah, yeah. I'm 99% sure I'm going to have to text my dad and see if that's true because I'm almost positive. All right. Yo. So, Brad. I let's... have a question for you. <sighs> I don't answer the questions I ask them here, guys. Okay, Darn it. maybe we should talk about fructose that's what ah that's what i was that was written down right here it just wrote down during our talk i was like oh man i skipped fructose that was my next topic boom bada bing bada so, boom bada bada bang. so we we talked about uh glucose and, and general carbohydrates we talked about fiber and the other component i that i wanted to talk about that i missed um would be fructose so fructose is sugar from fruit yes okay is that all i need to know no what is all the things about fructose. in one sentence? Give me a too long, didn't read on fructose, and then you can go into detail. A tilder, yeah, a tilder, a tilder. Um, yeah, so fructose is very similar to glucose, but its biochemical structure is a little bit different. So that means our that body, was your sentence, no, I get a couple sentences. So that means our body has to process it different than glucose, and it does it in the liver. Um, and your body can't store it. So it has to either use it for fuel immediately or convert it to something else that it can then store. You broke the rules. That was supposed to be one sentence. I am the law. So, so I know you've written a lot about fructose. Um, does fructose make me fat? No. It's, is it does my body is in terms of weight gain or loss does my body treat fructose like any other calorie no 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 what happens That's interesting um so a couple <clears throat> things um the fact that your body um can't can't store fructose means it prioritizes it in metabolism so a lot of times people just assume that when you consume fructose, since you can't, you know, process it or whatever, or you can't store it, it immediately gets turned to fat and stored, right? That's kind of the canonical view. Um, that's not quite true. So what we do know, because there's been studies where we've actually given people like infusions of fructose and then watched what their body does with it. Um, when you consume it, somewhere between... 40 to 80% of fructose, right? When you consume it, is just burned for energy, like within the first couple hours. Um, 20 to 40% is converted to glucose. 20-ish percent is converted to lactate. And less than 1% is converted to fatty acids. So the process of fructose being metabolized is actually more calorically expensive than regular glucose. So it's a little bit less efficient at being stored mm -hmm. as something else than regular um, glucose. The other interesting thing is glucose elicits an insulin response. Fructose mm -hmm. does not. What about when you, you said fructose can be converted, correct, into glucose? Yep. yep. So when it's converted into glucose, does it, in, does it give an insulin response? Um, mm, sort of. But not necessarily. Like, let's see if I can find the data. Um, does does fructose raise your blood sugar? Uh, no, because well, it does very, very, very slightly. If it's converted, will it, the, the conversion is what raises it? Yeah. Um, this this graph is really hard to see, so I can't really so share would a, it. Would but... a diabetic need? Would a type one diabetic or an insulin dependent diabetic need to give themselves less insulin? from eating fruit than eating oatmeal? 
for the uh, same for the same carbohydrate in grams, same amount of carbohydrate in grams. Yeah. You need less. Yeah, and that was actually I think it was in like the 90s there was a ton of research done on can we basically just give people with diabetes fructose instead of glucose and it'll make them better was not really a great intervention. I mean, it didn't really solve any of the major problems. Okay. Interesting. So yeah. do does glucose does fructose have any <laughs> use in my in exercise? What what benefit is it to exercise? Any over any benefit over um regular glucose? Um, yeah, so there's actually been um, actually a, a colleague of ours, Jorn Trommeling, he oh. actually did a study where they actually gave people just glucose or glucose and fructose. Mm -hmm. um, and here's a little bit of, I, I don't recall all of the specifics, but if you give somebody glucose and fructose, it may be a little bit better than just straight glucose for, mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. One is the glucose will end up going to your muscle tissue the fructose will end up going to your liver mm -hmm. um, and it will kind of allow for more rapid um, liver glycogen and uh, glucose creation in your liver. So you don't, so you won't run out of hepatic glucose output or your hepatic glucose output won't get lower or won't, will not be as low if you had okay. just consumed glucose. So there may be for like endurance type stuff, having a little bit of both may be beneficial. Okay. But it still has calories. Yes. Still has calories. Okay. All right. So just to review, unless you have a slide or something you want to put up, can we, review? we can keep going. Okay. So <clears throat> glucose, uh, glucose and just regular carbohydrates. Well, let's start backwards. Fiber, fiber technically doesn't have, fiber has negligible amount of calories when we're concerned with body, uh, body weight gain or loss. Mm -hmm. It is, does not have a nutritional value itself. Your body cannot digest it, but it is, uh, needed for gut and microbiome health yes. and digest, aids in digestion. Yes. Okay. Fructose. <clears throat> is found in fruits is it only yes. found in fruits mm, as far as i'm aware yes okay if it's found anywhere else it'd be minimal yes okay so fructose is found in fruit <clears throat> can be converted into glucose um and still has calories in it and is benefit and, and does provide benefits um for exercise and muscle repair and things like that Yes. Okay. And then the rest of carbohydrates, we're kind of, we kind of put into one, we can kind of put into one group for our purposes. And that is they have calories. They will help with your, they will help replenish Michael, help replenish mus muscle glycogen. Mm -hmm. They will help with performance. They will help with cognitive function. Um, and they all have calories, approximately four calories per gram. Yes. And they're all, and the rest of those are all broken down into glucose and the end of your body. It doesn't matter where the carbohydrate source comes from. Your body has no idea. Correct the mundo. Okay. <clears throat> Perfect. So I think we're, we're, we're solid there. Now, what is, wh what, when I'm eating carbs, wh what are the downsides to, what are the, what are the upsides and downsides to a low carb diet? Um, the upsides are it can sometimes make being in a calorie deficit without tracking easier. Mm -hmm. um, when you remove a food group, it can um, just kind of make the cognitive process of what you're going to eat easier. Mm -hmm. um, and for some people, there may be metabolic benefits to lower carb. Okay. For some populations. But what are the no. downsides to a low carbohydrate diet for the average person? Uh, you have much less get up and go. Less energy. Okay. Does it, yeah. how much does, I mean, does cognitive function decline on lower carbohydrate, carbohydrate diets? You know, that's one of those things where I'm not convinced that the literature's told us a clear story. Um, okay. There's some that say yes, some that say no. Part of it is like, how do you measure cognitive function super well, right? And I think the studies that have been yep. done have not done a great job. So it's 
it's a little bit hit or miss. I think there's some adaptation period. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of the downsides are you don't have enough. I mean, you don't, you can't really perform at a high level athletically for an extended period of time on a low carb diet, mm -hmm. unless you're genetically just a, for a freak. Right. Uh, and I say that in the nicest way possible. Um, genetically gifted is what I would call that one. Yeah. That's also maybe it has some weird connotations to it. Um, you know, some of the other downsides are disordered eating behaviors. Um, mm -hmm. Generally, whenever you have overly restrictive diets, you're you're at a higher likelihood of developing disordered eating. Um, and then a lot of times, if you go very low carb, you're not getting enough fiber um, in your diet, and you can have long term microbiome changes. Okay, perfect. Is there anywhere before we get to questions? Is there anywhere you wanted to go with this that we didn't? Mm, no. Is there anything we didn't, we covered everything you wanted and more? <sighs> everything. Your, heart's, your heart is content. My heart is content. Oh, my heart God. emoji is content. <sighs> okay. Uh, Leanne said, I've heard carbs from fruit is not as useful for gains versus carbs versus carbs uh, from things like potatoes, bread, et cetera. Is this true? Um, sort of. I would say if you're getting all of your carbs from fruit and you're trying to put on a substantial amount of muscle tissue, it's probably not going to be the best way to do it. But if you have 10, 20, 30% of your diet of your carbohydrates is from fruit, maybe even 40 or 50, you're probably okay. Okay. Sarah said, so what you're saying is that instead of eating a huge chocolate bar with glucose, I should reach for an apple with fructose. You've made an enemy for life, my friend. I didn't say that. Did I say that? No. No. Sarah? I think, she, I think she's trying to trap me. Yeah. Entrapment. That's actually a good movie. Have you ever seen that movie? Entrapment. I, I don't even remember who's is it with Angelina Jolie. Uh, sort of. Um, Catherine Zeta Jones. Sort of. Sort and of. Um, uh, Sean Connery. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I have seen it a long time ago. Yeah, there's like a scene with a skyscraper and yeah. yeah was oh, I was awesome. thinking of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Oh, that movie's <laughs> also very good. Um, Carolyn said. As a long distance runner, if you're 172 pounds on 2,200 maintenance calories, wondering about adding carbs. For example, the night before a 15 mile run, how many extra calorie, extra carb calories would be good to add to avoid bonking? Miles increasing weekly. Yeah, so I would say the the night before is probably not like the biggest thing to worry about. I mean, I would say your whole day carbohydrates before, and then your intra workout carbohydrates. Um, so, I mean, on 2,200 maintenance calories, if you're running 15 miles at a time, um, you're going to probably need a much lower fat, higher carbohydrate, moderate protein approach um, to sustain that level of training. And then you're probably going to need like intra-workout carbohydrates, somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 90 grams an hour and some very easily digestible carbohydrate. That's what I would say. Okay. Question was for her hubba. Her her hubs. She's got hubcaps. That's sweet. <laughs> Sarah said she's heading out. If she's heading out for a long run, would it be beneficial to take something with glucose and something with fructose? Yes, probably. Most likely, definitely, probably. Karina said, "What is your take on grains and legumes? Um, they're tasty. Do they make you gloomy? No. So I think you know there's." Especially kind of the rise of the uh, the paleo diet. I'm glad Jay finds himself so funny. I almost um, fell out of my chair. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, like, I just like leaned back and my back wasn't there, and I thought I was gonna fall. It was scary. <laughs> that would have been awesome. So the the questions around grains, grains and legumes kind of um, centers around some of the discussions are among the paleo diet world, and I'll try to break this down as easy as I can. Some of the arguments, there's two arguments. One is um, grains and legumes, more grains than legumes. Um, grains may have things like anti-nutrients, which are things that actually prevent you from absorbing nutrients, um, phytates, um, and saponins, some things that like maybe increase the likelihood of having leaky gut. Um, legumes, maybe because they're a little bit more potentially problematic from having... 
um, immunogenic proteins and some of the things on, they may also have anti-nutrients and things like that. Now, from my read of the literature, which is incomplete, um, so I don't have all the answers here, unless you have major issues with grains, like when you consume them, you have digestive issues or you show some bad response, I don't think there's any negatives to consuming them, right? If anything, generally speaking, diets that are higher in grains and legumes tend to be more healthful than diets that are void of them. They're higher in fiber. Um, a lot of times they have uh, pretty high levels of nutrients. They generally tend to be associated with lower cardiovascular disease risk. Um, now those are all associative and they're more generally reflective of healthy dietary patterns than just the foods itself. But I think, I mean, I, I have a bowl of oatmeal every morning. Um, I don't eat a ton of legumes just cause I'm like, I don't really care that much about eating a lot of beans, but, um, I don't like shy away from them either. I did eat a lot of beans in graduate school cause they're cheap. Put a lot of them in a crock pot and did a lot of slow cooking. I used to, when I was absolutely dirt broke, I would just eat, I would buy cans of tuna. That was always what I went to. I don't know why. Cans of tuna. And then me and the cat would share a can of tuna for a meal because I couldn't afford cat food either. Look how far we've come in life. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, but the, and then I hated tuna for so I never had tuna. And then one day my neighbor was like, I need cat food. So do, you, like, Here. do you think you have mercury poisoning and irreparable brain damage from that? I'm pretty sure I had irreparable brain damage prior to the tuna <laughs> consumption that I went through in my life. Um, probably mercury poisoning, though, but the brain damage was was there for sure. Faux um, show. I mean, I don't remember like my whole freshman year of high school. So, but that was well, that's just from like traumatic brain injury. So, you know, say, I, I just nobody remembers their freshman year of high school. It was traumatic. Yeah, but I forgot mine like at the end of freshman year because I fell off a skateboard. Say, did someone punch you in the head? No, I was trying. I don't remember it. I was apparently trying to jump a car on a skateboard and then I <laughs> nailed my head and then I got back up and everybody like talking to the kids I was with, they said like, it sounded like a, uh, a gunshot went off and I got back up, got on my skateboard and just skated around. Then that night <clears throat> it was, it was the uh, second semester finals, my freshman year of high school. And we just, that was the first day of finals. We had three days. That was the first. And I don't remember any of this. This is just the story. And I was on AOL Instant Messenger messaging people at like midnight, not making sense. And then when they told me I wasn't making sense, apparently I started calling their houses um, on landlines because that's what we use then. So I was I was calling their houses and one of their parents called my house and my stepdad, who's a, who's a cop, like came into the came into the office where the computer was because, you know, you had one computer for your family came in and like, just started yelling at me. And I just started, like, I started making like random animal sounds. At him. He's like, I think you need to go to the hospital. He thought he was on drugs. And then they took me in and that turned out I had a concussion and spent three days in the hospital. And didn't remember anything about high school or anybody I knew. That's, cr that's crazy. Yeah, that's why, I, that's why I'm convinced. That's why I can't remember people's names. So everything about you is explainable by a single skateboarding accident. I've had six con six concussions that I've been treated for. Yeah, yeah. So I'll go with I'll go with it's those. Well, I got knocked out by a quarter once that, and I nailed my head off a ambulance, and that gave me a concussion. I feel like you need to just wear a padded helmet everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I should I, I should just do. That. I fall a lot too, so that I fell down the stairs the other day again. Yeah, that oh was my, not... <laughs> my wife did that like a couple weeks ago and like sprained her ankle pretty bad. Ooh, I just I tip I tend to fall and just land on my shoulder or my back every time and get hurt. Word. Wait, you, word. Marissa hurt her ankle. You and Marissa hurt your ankles a lot. I like except for when I broke my ankle. I hadn't I hadn't rolled an ankle since high school. Oh. I remember that... when you when you broke your ankle. Yeah, that was that was it was so funny. So when she did it, um <laughs> I'm sure she thinks it's funny. Well, sort of. Um, so like she she basically just like missed a step and rolled her ankle. And I was like, hey, do you think it's like just sprained or broken? She's like, I have no idea. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? She's like, well, I've never rolled my ankle before. I was like, you're 28 years old and you've never rolled your ankle? She's like, no. I was like, that's so crazy. 
the fact that your wife is 28 years old is what baffles me the most. I feel so old when I talk to you. She'll be 29 in February. So. Oh, <laughs> she'll be 29. I mean, God, I'm going to be 33, Jay. Yeah, I know. You and Lisa are the same age. I'm so old. Look at all this gray that's coming out. Dude, dude, don't. You have less gray in your beard than I do. You probably have less yep. gray hair than I do too. No, I have a lot of gray hair, but I have less gray in my. I I don't have less gray in my beard because you can't grow a beard. Once That's you not hit, true. I once you one. go, once you finish puberty, you'll be able to grow a beard. You're so funny. Let's okay. How about this? I will clean shave for Monday. You clean shave for Monday, and we won't shave for two weeks, and we'll see whose beard is better. Oh, yours is way better. Oh, okay, just make it as long as you publicly admit that, then I'm okay. Oh yeah. You just said I couldn't grow a beard. Yeah. I said I can't. I just didn't Lisa, say it was a great one. Lisa asked me when I when I first shaved when we started. I had my beard and it was long. Remember how long that thing was? <clears throat> yeah. And, and I shaved it off. And she's like, "You're growing up." I'm like, "Well, yeah." And people started making comments like, "Where's your beard? Where's your beard?" And she's like, "What? Why is it like? Why do beard people like comment each other on beards?" I'm like, "Because not every guy can grow a beard." So she she started like at, she asks everybody with a beard that she sees at work or anywhere. Do you think that having a beard, like a good beard, is a sign? Like, do you do is part of the reason you have a beard to show people that you're uh, you're more of a man than them? And every single person said yes. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the only reason I want a beard. No, I'm only five foot seven. I have to have a beard. Like <laughs> five foot seven, one hundred and thirty nine pounds. What's what rap song is that from? I don't know, but that was my stage weight for my bodybuilding show. <laughs> All right, I'm we're out. We're we're enough. an hour. Nobody's listening anymore. Actually, there's still a lot of people here. Sorry, you guys are all putting up with us. Thank you. Um, we're out, guys. If anybody's interested in coaching, learning more about how to manage carbohydrates in your diet, um, visit macrosinc.net slash services. We have a two-week free trial for nutrition coaching. If you like this talk on carbs, we have another one uh, from the previous episode on the same style on protein. And the next episode after this will be the exact same style on fats. Um, so check out those on the podcast, macrosync.net slash podcast. If you want to check out the video replays and see the graphs that Brad displayed, macrosync.net slash YouTube. And you can go in and check all those out. Um, this one, this episode is the the podcast titles all of the shows have the exact same title no matter what medium you're on so just search for that and you will find it jay um, we need to get our youtube subscribers up i'm very disappointed oh, that yeah. we're not at 100 grand yet yeah so for anybody listening we'll start doing this at the beginning of every show and start an actual marketing campaign for this we are going to donate ten thousand dollars to the alzheimer's research found research foundation if we get 100 thousand subscribers on the youtube so go to macrosinc.net slash youtube hit that subscribe button and at the end of the year when we hit our as soon as we hit our hundred thousand we will donate ten thousand dollars charity but it has to be by the end of the year so hustle um, yep start liking it share it do everything you can maybe we should get a graphic made for it we haven't done that yet we've been kind of busy that's true we should suzanne are you listening is suzanne here I feel like if I ask Suzanne to do one more thing, she might She's, kill me. Oh, what about what about uh, what, Emily? Oh yeah, when she gets back from her uh, her trip. Yeah. Well, well e why don't you email her now so we don't forget? Mm, that seems reasonable. Yeah, because so so open up an email and do that right now. Deal. Okay, I'll be even make a note to double check on you. All right, so that is it, guys. Again, macrosync.net slash. Uh, slash services and I think we're out Brett you have a fantastic weekend everybody thank you for watching same and we'll see you, see you, we'll see you next time same at macro the time. same macro, macro time on the same <laughs> macro channel I tried to like do it backwards and you just you, you, no fucks given <laughs> just keep on going hey, don't forward. you dare screw up my scene <laughs> See you guys later. Do do.